Man, if there's a series that makes it clear that the Mariners need to go out and bring in some offensive reinforcements as soon as possible, it was this four game series against the White Sox in Seattle. They had a four game series against the worst team in baseball, Chicago White Sox coming into town. They had to come back, the Mariners had to come back in each game in the seventh inning or later in order for them to win this series. They won three out of four games over the four game series. But if it wasn't for Cal Raleigh on those Monday and Tuesday night games, his walk-off grand slam, his clutch hit on Tuesday, the Mariners easily could have gotten swept by the White Sox. And with Garrett Crochet on the mound today, of course, okay, Garrett Crochet is filthy, but the Mariners struck out 19 times, which is the most in a single game by a single team in MLB so far this year. The Seattle Mariners so far this season are 24th in OPS. That's on base plus slugging. Their on base percentage is 27th in all of baseball. Their batting average is tied for second worst in all of baseball with the Oakland A's. Their slug is what boosts them back up to 24th overall in OPS. Fangraphs weighted runs created plus definitely favors their stats overall. They are currently 17th overall in weighted runs created plus, but I think the MLB.com stats show more of a true picture of what their offense has done so far this year. They are 24th so far this year in runs scored. They're 24th in OPS. And of course, they are first place in strikeouts after this last offseason when they retooled to not strike out as much. The Seattle Mariners lead the league with 713 strikeouts so far this season. They're neck and neck with the Oakland Athletics who have 696. Then there's a bit of a drop off about 7% between the Mariners and third place Red Sox. The team that has done the best so far at avoiding strikeouts is the Houston Astros. They have 471. The Seattle Mariners are currently striking out 51% more times than the Houston Astros. The Texas Rangers are sixth best at avoiding strikeouts. Over the course of a season, that is going to catch up with you. I'm seriously at a bit of a loss for words because it doesn't make sense how many guys have come into Seattle and produced below their career norms. You look at Teoscar Hernandez last year, his home and away splits. He had a 217 batting average and a 643 OPS at home. When he played away games, he had a 295 batting average and an 830 OPS. He had a batting average swing of 80 points when he played on the road versus at home and almost a 200 point swing in OPS when he played on the road versus at home. After today's slate of games, the Mariners are currently first place in the AL West. They are five and a half games ahead of the Texas Rangers at the moment. They are eight games ahead of the Houston Astros, and they're heading into a three game series against the Rangers in Seattle, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This game will be a big tell into what their team overall really looks like. The Rangers coming into this weekend series are five and five over their last 10 games, and they just had a series against the Los Angeles Dodgers in Los Angeles. They won two out of three games in that series. The point of this entire video is to make clear that the Mariners need to go make their offensive acquisitions as soon as possible. You cannot let this gap between the Rangers and the Astros shrink at all over the next couple months. We're a month and a half out from the trade deadline, and other teams are gonna start making their additions like the Rangers, like the Astros, like other teams and other divisions that are looking to win their divisions. If you add those offensive reinforcements now instead of a month from now, then you're able to keep that gap where it is. And each game really matters, especially at the end of the season. The Mariners are in need of some bullpen help, which should be taken care of with Gregory Santos coming back around July. Logan Evans, a starting pitching prospect for the Mariners, has been moved to the bullpen, and it sounds like he should be able to help impact the major league roster in the next few weeks, if not before, uh, right around the, the all-star break. But clearly from the stats that I showed earlier, the Mariners' biggest needs are on the offensive side of the ball, and they need one, ideally two, impactful bats and upgrades in their lineup, which is going to cost money both this year in their salaries and likely in future contracts. Now there is a Seattle Times article that came out on June 3rd from Adam Jude and Ryan Divish. I will link that in the description of this video. John Stanton, expects the Mariners to be active in the trade market despite the root sports woes. And I will believe it when I see it, but he says that we've got the resources to be able to do the things we need to do to put a good team on the field. He said, I look at the talent we've got on the offensive side and I think we've got the ability to hit. That said, we will look at the deadline. I'll spend time with Jerry and Justin as we approach the deadline. 
and we'll talk about where we are. He goes on to say that he feels great about where we are and you know there are a whole bunch of things that go into the decisions we make and clearly finances are a factor. But the loss of revenue from Root isn't the reason we've made any decisions over the last couple of years. Pointing to Julio Rodriguez's mega contract signed in August of 2022 as an example, Stanton said he's open to similar contract extensions for some of the Mariners young core players. Throwing this out there to the Mariners front office, if funding or finances is one of the big obstacles in whether or not you'll go acquire some big names at the deadline because you have to pay their salaries the rest of this year then please reach out to me i would be happy to help you cash out refinance some of your properties i'm a mortgage broker during the day licensed in washington and oregon would be happy to help you solve that issue So who exactly might the Mariners be looking to target at the deadline? There's a New York Times article that lists out that they need to go get a corner bat and a bullpen arm. We'll see if they solve that bullpen arm solution in-house or if they're going to have to still add before the deadline. But the corner bats that the New York Times article lists are Pete Alonzo, which has been a very common name. There's Vlad Guerrero Jr., Luis Robert Jr., Paul Goldschmidt, Josh Bell, Brent Rooker, Lane Thomas, and Taylor Ward. John Morosi today on Wyman and Bob also mentioned potentially Luis Renjifo, who's basically a utility infielder. That would be an amazing acquisition in my eyes also. So let's take a look at these players and their contracts and see what that might look like. Starting with first baseman Pete Alonzo, he agreed to a one-year contract with the Mets for $20,500,000, and he will become a free agent after this season. With that being the case, if the Mariners were willing to take on most of his contract, they would be able to give up less in prospect capital. And since there's only a half a year of control, he won't cost nearly as much as some of these other guys will. Pete Alonso is the definition of a slugger. He's more likely than not to hit 35 to 40 plus home runs in a season. And while his batting average isn't fantastic, he does still get on base and that slug makes up for a lot of the difference. Pete Alonso, along with the next couple guys would be more of a sure option at first base compared to relying on the production of Ty France or rookie Tyler Locklear. Next up is Vladdy Jr. Just his name is gonna cost a lot. He has one and a half years of club control tied to him. He's making right at $20 million this year. And then next year, realistically, he's probably going to demand $25 to $30 million in arbitration. He has the Pete Alonso power upside plus additional bat to ball skills. That has him sitting at a 281 batting average currently, a 370 on base percentage. And right now he's about 25% better than the average hitter. Add to that the fact that he is an analytics darling and he's going to cost you a bit. Paul Goldschmidt is 36 years old and in his final year of club control. He's making $26 million this year. At 36 years old, plus the cost of his contract, he won't cost quite as much as Vladdy. He does have a full no trade clause, so he would have to accept a trade to Seattle. Goldie is having an abnormally low statistical season. His batting average is typically up around 300 plus the ability to produce power, but so far he's yet to find his stride. This could help whatever team acquires him reduce the total cost of acquiring Paul Goldschmidt. The switch hitting Josh Bell is also in his final year of his contract, and he's having just below a league average season so far. He's at a 242 batting average, a 312 on base, but his baseball savant analytics are saying, please do not get this guy. Blue is not the color that you want. Luis Robert Jr. is signed to a contract with club control through 2027. He signed a six year $50 million contract with the White Sox a couple years ago to buy out the rest of his arbitration years and then give the club a couple years of control. He is being paid $12.5 million this year, $15 million next year, and then there's two club options in 2026 and 27, both for $20 million apiece. Considering his upside is one of the best players in baseball, $20 million for Luis Robert when he's a 28-year-old is a steal. As we just saw in this White Sox series, when he's hot, he has the ability to carry a team. Last season, he had a casual 38 home runs, 80 RBIs with a 264 batting average. He was 30% above league average last year and is above 30% better than the average league hitter so far this year. I would be more than willing to give up prospect capital if it means that we're batting Julio and Luis Robert Jr. 2-3 in the order for the next three years. He does strike out a lot, but he would fit right into this team. He also has wheels on the base path, but he does have the injury concern, so the White Sox have been playing it safe with him. Brent Rooker has a contract that is made for a John Stanton budget. 
He's an outfielder with the A's and he'll be heading into his first year of arbitration next year. His cost will continue to increase, but he has three and a half years of club control. Rooker found his stride last year with the A's when he made the all-star team for the first time. He hit 30 home runs with a 246 batting average. And so far this year, he's having an even better power year. He also has a 340 on base percentage. His OPS plus, his on base plus slugging compared to the rest of the league is a 147, meaning that he's 47% better than the average hitter as of right now. This would be a natural fit because of course he has said that his favorite away ballpark is T-Mobile Park in Seattle and he doesn't want to face another Matt Brash slider so it works out. The only issue here is that his whiff and his strikeout rates are right on line with the rest of the Mariners team. Outfielder Taylor Ward for the Angels is currently in arbitration. He will be under club control through the 2026 season and he's having a solid season himself about 20% above league average. And the analytics are all there. He's barreling up balls, he doesn't chase, he's getting his walks in, and he's a solid defender. As for his teammate, utility man Luis Renjifo, this is a guy I think makes a lot of sense. He has one year of arbitration next year before he becomes a free agent in 2026. And so far this season, he's been about 30% above league average at the plate. And what's different about this guy compared to the rest that we've talked about tonight, he's not a big power guy, but he makes contact with the ball and he gets on base. He's got a 319 batting average so far this year, a 366 on base percentage, and as a switch hitter, the Mariners do not have a guy like this in their lineup. Jorge Polanco at his peak, perhaps, but outside of J.P. Crawford with his on-base ability, Luis Brenjifa would fit perfectly into this Mariners lineup. If the Mariners got one of these guys, I would be ecstatic. Go get two of these guys, and you've secured your spot in the World Series. This Mariners pitching staff is top-notch. It's time to match it with their offense. Let me know in the comments who you think the Mariners should target at the trade deadline. Thank you for watching and go check out this video right here.